this isn't actually a race. This is a test of, of innovation. It's a test of endurance. It's a test of sustainability and engineering. I feel like we're representing our country. We're doing Australia proud. Um, and we're showing off our engineering skills to the whole, the whole world. The solar has really opened my eyes to the future of automotive technology and I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that I've been given. So today we're here for the dynamic screening. So that just comprises of a couple of challenges. So we've got slalom tests, we've got like a couple of laps around the track, we've got a brake test, um, and it's all for officials to see how well our car performs. I'm currently working on the data that needs to be taken from the car and transferred over to Bridgestone. You get graded on points like how much energy you've used, how much energy you've gotten back, and a few other bits and pieces. So it's going to be a pretty involved day, but uh, combined with dynamic screening, which is obviously going to be difficult. Axiona Energia is sponsoring the Deakin University Ascend Solar Car uh, because we value innovation, engineering, and we want to invest in people and invest in the planet. And that was something that we saw that we could do with this partnership. At Axiona Energia, we try to be more than just sponsors. We try to forge long-lasting partnerships and to really work with teams and support them in their individual goals. The team starts before dawn and they finish way after sunset and it's amazing to witness their problem solving, to witness their teamwork, to witness their applied engineering skills and to be a part of this journey. Uh, the race I felt really fast. We hit 107 kilometers an hour on the straight, which is two kilometers an hour faster than we hit yesterday. We completed screwing on first attempt, so yeah, everyone's really happy. I'm feeling really good for the race tomorrow. Um, everyone's super psyched. Uh, so I've been involved in this project going on about three years now. So I started off uh, doing my final year thesis on the drivetrain for the project. I started leading into it more full time about a year and a half ago. Being the first driver to hit the ground running felt really surreal. It's always been a sort of back in the mind that this event only takes place every two years. There were people lined up all along the road waving and smiling and taking photos and it was a really beautiful moment, especially being involved in this project for so long. It was nerves all around, like everyone was a little bit antsy and on edge. Kind of that moment where we've all come together, the thing that we've been working on for ages is finally there, it's finally at the competition. So a lot of excitement, a lot of nerves and it's a good feeling within the team. To be here has taught me so many hands-on skills that I've honed. Um, and it's allowed me to bring out quite a lot of skills that I've already had to showcase within my engineering career. It's been quite a privilege of mine as well because I've always loved designing and building and designing something as complex and intricate and as fun to drive as this thing is, it's, uh, that has been quite a privilege. Car's performance so fast is pretty good, it's as what we sort of expect. Everything I'm getting from the strategy car in behind is all been good news. We've uh, just stopped over at the first control stop as well, so our car is getting half an hour to cool down, uh, so same with our driver. Um, means we'll hit the ground running again in the time trial and then pull over at the end of the day and uh, set up camp for the night. Day one ended really well. We got pretty much as far as we wanted to get, knowing that we're extending the range as much as possible while keeping in the time challenges of the cruiser class. Yeah, all pretty excited and all ready to go. So the goals for today is to reach Tennant Creek. That's another 450 k's away, I want to say, from where we are right now. We will do that traveling at a fairly low speed to try and conserve energy. Tennant Creek's our first charging stop, so that's uh, one of the most important places to be. The team are dealing with the challenges really well, especially coming out of Darwin, that was just intense. You know, it wasn't perfectly calm in there for sure, but you know, we got out the end of it and we are feeling really good. The team have done a great job and I'm glad they were awarded with such a good first day of the challenge. 
So the car is currently charging. We've aligned the solar array with the sun as best as we can to try and get the first rays of light in the morning before we take off. That puts us in really good uh, track to get to Tennant Creek and then from there we're looking really good to make it all the way to Adelaide. The biggest challenge for today is to make sure that the car doesn't break down. Electrically, I think the whole system is working as expected, better than expected with uh, our battery life. As long as mechanically it can stay together, we should be able to reach our goal. So we've We've definitely hit our distance target for what we expected today. Meeting and exceeding expectations in battery consumption and overall efficiency in the car, and so we couldn't be happier right now. So we got to charge up the car a little bit overnight, and we are now ready to go and hit off our next stint down towards Cooperpedia, our next charging spot. Tonight we're planning on overshooting our control stop at Alice Springs. It's a dynamic sort of strategy, so that may not be the end of the result. Uh, we're looking at about near 10k out of Stuart Wells, so it's going to be a big day of travel from here. I think the biggest challenge for today is going to be our long stint in between Barrow Creek and Alice Springs. It's a good four hours or so of driving, although we may change our speed to see how that goes, but. Bowen did a close to a five hour stint yesterday, so we know a four hour stint's gonna be the easier. We're at Alice Springs at the moment, and we're aiming to get about 50 kilometers down the road. We've found a nice rest area there that's got amenities, and it's gonna fit in pretty well with the speed that we're targeting. So we've still got half an hour stint left today, but so far it's been a mixed bag, couple of ups, couple of downs. We've had a little bit of electronic problems, but they were sorted pretty quickly. Coming out of Barrow Creek, we come across some fires with a heap of smoke, but it wasn't as bad as I was planning on it being, so a bit of a relief there how quickly we got through it all. Yeah, the smoke effect of the solar panel is huge. We're probably running about 33 to sort of 50% our max that we'd get from the sun. We had to make a few emergency stops, but everyone was prepared for what they had to do and were able to get out of there quickly and safely. Yeah, the progress so far has been good. It's honestly better than we've expected as a team. Obviously, we encountered an issue today, but they were expected. Yesterday was a bit stressful. It's, um, it was one of the hardest legs of the trip. And about halfway through the day, we noticed that the data just disappeared for a second, just a split second, which is, is not good. It means we got a loose cable somewhere. And then all of a sudden, it all just disappears. And the car, it just stops accelerating. And we pull over to the side, which is just devastating. Every time we slow down, it's just a waste of energy. Every time we speed up, it's a waste of energy. This is the first time throughout this whole trip, which I thought, maybe this is the end. You know, maybe this is as far as we make it. We're collecting some lovely solar right now, which is making us very happy because we have a very big stretch. The reward at the end is really nice. It's, it's Cooper PD. We get our second charge for the trip and that is much needed. we are all got our fingers crossed that today will be a good day. Hopefully the wind's behind us. It's mostly downhill, but um, yeah, this is a, a big unknown if we're gonna make it. So yeah, pray for us. <laughs> moment we've uh, pulled over because the battery's gone flat and uh, we decided to recharge just a little bit just to see if we can make the border. How are you feeling now? <laughs> oh, definitely a mix of emotions. I feel like I should be sad I guess that like as our car's stopped on the side of the road pretty much, but I'm honestly um, pretty happy. I think we've went as far as, or further than we expected. So to be this far and to have a car that's still working, um, just needs a bit of a charge, um, is, yeah, I think a great achievement. 
I'm feeling so incredibly proud of the team, the team's efforts and the amount of hard effort and work that they've put in. It's been a privilege of mine to witness. So solo car races like this are important, not only to help uh, train students in just learning their new skills, learning practical skills in particular, but also understanding how uh, to tackle a challenge. And that's part of what makes engineering so exciting to me, is that we're able to take this like kind of problem solving and apply it to real world problems. And I really look forward to doing that in the future and hopefully within the renewable energy industry. I feel so grateful to be here on this journey with the team and not just watch the race from a distance as a distance sponsor, but actually be on the journey, witness what is happening every day and also to be able to document the team on their journey. The biggest insight that I've had from accompanying the team is just that this is a challenge of how efficient and sustainable you can be in your strategy. It's not about going the fastest, it's, it's not about winning. It's about conserving energy and being smart to make the journey safely and to just make the journey. comforting to know that even though we didn't complete the race, we feel like we completed the challenge. We obviously wanted to finish, be able to go all the way to Adelaide, even though we had to charge the car. We have charge. Welcome to Adelaide Cash. Thank you guys very much. It's been yeah, quite an epic journey. Yeah, it turns out none of the cruiser class has finished either, and awesome knowing that we were up there with them. Yeah, all, all happy days here. I mean, as a team, we're very happy where we come. Honestly, we didn't expect to get that far, even with the environment that we were in, the headwinds, all that sort of stuff, so. We didn't really know what to expect. I think that was our biggest challenge. I think from the smoke to the headwinds really threw off our strategy. Very proud of the team, because we made so far, even though we had a few problems due to the weather, but we still have to celebrate what we've gone so far. Everyone was like fixing one problem together. Um, I feel like it's like a team energy together. It's taught me a lot about myself, um, how I deal with certain situations, uh, some of the strengths I have, some of the weaknesses I have. Challenges like the World Solar Challenge are important for a sustainable future because this is a real test of new capabilities, new innovation, especially for the renewable energy development. Driving 3,000 kilometres through the Australian Outback is an amazing feat for any car, let alone a car that's purely powered by the sun.